you survived the Oscars, you survived award season. If you were a screenwriter, what would be the sequel to what we've all observed the last two years on equality in, in film? Well, my hope is that the sequel um, will be um, beyond Me Too <clears throat> and um, will bring us back to Title VII, to Equal Employment Opportunity Law. I think in order to have a conversation about this subject, you really need to look at Hollywood, at American um, entertainment media industry as not being just a, you know, a bunch of private businesses, but as being the communication center of the most powerful <clears throat> or one of the most powerful nations in the world, the propaganda center, right. the storytelling center. So if women are shut out, are unable to participate equally in America's storytelling, then we okay. are excluded from our cultural I narrative. I happened last night to be watching Casablanca with the youngest one forcing Humphrey Bogart and Ingrid Bergman honor at gunpoint. And there was Ingrid Bergman banned from Hollywood, banned from America because she had an affair in the early 50s or well. That's all great and that's ancient history, but the new history is in Hollywood. You need to get equality done. How do you do that at the Sunset Tower Hotel, in some lawyer's office, or in some movie producer's office? How do you affect equality change? Equality in um, entertainment media in the United States um, cannot be, it's not an inside job. Uh, we need Hollywood and our industry to, to help, um, to move the numbers up, to care about this issue, um, and to hire more women, but really, Equal employment opportunity is protected by a law called Title VII, and that law currently does not function in, entertain, in, in Hollywood. And the reason is, if you want to invoke that law, it, uh, Title VII is equal employment opportunity law. It's a civil rights part of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Mm -hmm. If you want to invoke that law because you've been discriminated against individually or if women as a group, you will get blacklisted. Therefore, that law can't work. If you, if you try to use it, you can no longer participate in the industry that you have spent your entire life working toward. You're out. So that means women can't speak out using that law. It's not an effective law. In order to solve this problem, we need to make that law enforceable, and that needs to start with our federal government, with legislative change and with reform to that law. Uh, Maria, when you look at representation in front of the camera, behind the camera, is it changing? Is it changing slowly or has, you know, has it made strides because of the Me Too movement? We've seen um, extraordinary change, um, I think, uh, in a lot of ways. I mean, I think these are very exciting times. Um, Gina Davis has been doing extraordinary work um, for equal representation of women and girls on the screen since 2004. And uh, very little had been getting done for women behind the scenes. So in 2011, uh, beginning of 2012, I took the battle into my union, the Directors Guild of America, um, to try to uh, find ways to challenge the systems and challenge systemic discrimination against women directors. Uh, I ended up being able to instigate an uh, investigation inside the ACLU and, um, and it went to right. be part of the EEOC. So there's a federal investigation going on We didn't have time to talk about Anna Bowden and Captain Marvel. I want to get you on again to talk about at the margin how women are doing uh, with some of these blockbuster movies.